Last week we announced the, uh, the reintroduction of some of our services and uh, you, you are well aware that hospitals were directed to wind down uh, or cease uh, elective surgeries and elective procedures um, in March. And now we're in a position uh, as a hospital sector to be able to reintroduce services uh, to our respective communities. Uh, so, uh, in the case of uh, St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital, uh, we're looking at our high priority areas and we're, it's a gradual and slow uh, scaled approach to reintroducing our services. So the three areas for our, our hospital that are priority are uh, uh, surgical uh, procedures, um, some outpatient uh, clinics and cardio, uh, cardio diagnostic services. Uh, so those are the ones that we focused it on in the first uh, phase of our uh, reintroduction and um, uh, that started uh, this, this week, uh, June 1st, and um, it, we're basically doing a two-week in increment of assessing uh, how much more we can do on a two-week cycle. Uh, it is a regional plan, so we are working with our partner hospitals in the southwest to coordinate to make sure that uh, we're uh, ensuring fair and equitable access to our respective communities but also that uh, the shared resources we have, for example, pr protective, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, laboratory capacity is available as we ramp up together. Basically what happened uh, at the time of ceasing the, these, uh, these procedures and uh, these surgeries, uh, we had a wait list and so we have maintained that wait list. And uh, over the course of the pandemic, we continue to provide actually these services, particularly for uh, what we refer to as emergent or urgent life or limb cases. So uh, obviously if patients showed up in the emergency department needed surgery uh, because it was a life threatening issue, then obviously those surgeries went ahead. So that continued and our wait list essentially has been uh, assessed on a regular basis by our surgeons. And so, um, so our focus right now in terms of looking at that wait list is who, who has the highest priority and need. Uh, so it's not done evenly in terms of the disciplines. Uh, it really is comes down to uh, there's a priority setting that is established in the industry for some time. We refer to them as priority one, two, or three, and four. Priority one is the most urgent ones and priority four is our really elective that can wait. And so right now we're focusing on priority uh, twos. Priority ones are, are urgent, emergent. Those are being done in any case. Uh, now we're focusing on our, our level two or priority two cases. And so we have to get through that. It'll take some time for hospitals to really get caught up on the backlog uh, of the original wait list plus the backlog of additional cases that have surfaced over the last two months. We're, we're very uh, concerned and very uh, much attuned to the fact that there's a lot of anxiety among our patients waiting for surgeries and other procedures. And, and so we're, um, we, we, uh, we're sensitive to that point. And, um, how, but just know that we have a wait list, uh, that we have our uh, clinical staff, our medical staff that are reviewing those wait lists. In terms of uh, how to uh, move forward with your particular c c circumstance, uh, basically the hospital or the surgeon's office will call you. Um, and so be assured that your particular case has not been dropped or forgotten. It's, 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 it is on the list. And uh, we're doing daily uh, reviews of that wait list uh, in terms of priority setting. And so um, uh, we ask for, we continue to ask for uh, our patients, um, patients uh, as we work through this. The list will take some time to go through. Um, and so this, this week, for example, we're uh, are moving into our second uh, week of, of additional services and we're hopeful that we can expand even further. Uh, how many weeks and or perhaps months will take is really uncertain. It really depends on a lot of factors uh, that I mentioned earlier, what the availability of capacity in the system, uh, any outbreaks of COVID that may happen in the community will take precedence. Um, and so it's, it's a delicate balance that we're, we're managing here.